It's the biggest tax cut in the history of our country, and it's going to spur growth, and it's going to keep our companies here. We wanted reinvestments, new technology, new tractors, new trailers. Those are things that so many of us have been hesitant to invest in. Eminem lashing out at President Trump with an offensive freestyle rant. Look at little Martin Mather saving black people one line at a time. This is a guy now who's worth about $190 million. He could go out and and talk to blacks about a lot of different things. At least 23 people have died, and that number is expected to potentially go up because hundreds of people are still missing. That look like they went through Armageddon. The Boy Scouts of America expands programs to welcome girls from Cub Scouts to the highest ranking of Eagle Scout. I watched Colin Kaepernick, and I thought it was terrible. The NFL should have suspended him for one game, and he would have never done it again. You cannot disrespect our country, our flag, our anthem. You cannot do that. We have a Fox News alert, and it is huge news, and this could be what the president was referring to yesterday. After five years held prisoners by the Haqqani Network, a Taliban faction, an American woman and her family just released. Fox News Pentagon producer Lucas Tomlinson is live at the Pentagon with what we know. Lucas, man, they've been, to, they've been together, but they have been held hostage for a long time. That's correct, Brian. Just moments ago, Fox News has learned that the Pakistani army transferred this American woman and her family, her two children born in captivity while being held hostage by the Haqqani Network, a Taliban faction since 2012. They, the family has been transferred to American control. I've been told this was a diplomatically led effort. Uh, U.S. Special Operations Forces were not used in the rescue and comes as the family in 2012 went hiking in Afghanistan just outside Kabul in a heavily Taliban-controlled area. Now, as you mentioned, Brian, moments ago, last night, President Trump hinted about the good news in a speech in Pennsylvania, the same state where this American woman, Caitlin Coleman, is from. From. Something happened today where a country that totally disrespected us called with some very, very important news. And one of my generals came in. They said, you know, I have to tell you, a year ago they would have never done that. It was a great sign of respect. You'll probably be hearing about it over the next few days. But this is a country that did not respect us. This is a country that respects us now. The world is starting to respect us again, believe me. The family was last seen in a hostage video last December pleading with then-President Obama to help them. Caitlin Coleman warned, don't become another Jimmy Carter, she warned then-President Obama. As I mentioned, she had two children under Haqqani captivity and said in the video, Brian, that the Haqqani saw her being defiled by her terrorist captives. Now, there's two other Americans being held captive by the Haqqani Network. Last year, U.S. Special Operations Forces Navy SEALs attempted a rescue in eastern Afghanistan, an attempt to rescue an American professor teaching mm -hmm. at the American University in Kabul at the time. Now, when the SEALs arrived, the American hostage had been moved. They killed eight Haqqani members. Uh, there's also a Massachusetts man currently being held hostage by the Haqqanis. But to wrap up, an American family is now free, a family mm -hmm. of five Caitlin Coleman and her Canadian husband, Josh Boyle, and their two children born in uh, Haqqani captivity right. are now free this morning. Guys. Look, Lucas, do we have, okay, so the president was probably alluding to them being released uh, last night in Pennsylvania. Do we have any idea, has the administration been negotiating to try to get them released, and why now? Well, the administration has been negotiating. It started back in the Obama administration when the family was first taken captive. In fact, the entire hostage review process was put under scrutiny because of the high number of American captives and some of their family members saying they weren't getting the support from uh, the last administration that they thought they should. Uh, now, uh, efforts were complicated in, in getting this American family back when the U.S. military killed the leader of the Taliban, Mullah Mansour, a year ago right. uh, in Pakistan. So uh, a lot of things going on, a lot of negotiations, but 
it is good news this morning, guys. And, and Mansoor killed coming back from Iran. And so we let, yeah, let, let them know we know there's synergy between Iran, the Taliban, and Pakistan. So this all comes into play. We don't have diplomatic relations with the Akani network. So how do you think we did it? Well, I, uh, just recently, the Secretary of Defense Jim Mattis and the Chairman of Joint Chiefs of Staff Joe Dunf General Joe Dunford told Congress that they were no longer going to let Pakistan safely harbor the Akani mm. network and the Taliban inside Pakistan. So one might speculate this is a, a good faith notion that the Pakistan uh, government uh, put out the word that we need to help recover this American family. And it sure does appear like a good token, a, a sign yeah. of good right. faith. Lucas, how were they treated? Do we know anything about that? The only thing we know, Ainsley, is from this hostage video that was released uh, last December, in December 2016, where the family looked like they were under duress. You have two children, young children, born under captivity, one uh, sucking a pacifier, yeah. and you had Caitlin Coleman saying on camera that the Haqqani network had, and her young children, excuse me, her young children had seen her defiled by her captives. So That's terrible. Really horrible and gruesome stuff. It is, but the good news is she's coming home. Lucas uh, Tomlinson, our producer at the Pentagon, thank you very much. Thanks, Meanwhile, the president uh, mentioned that last night when he was in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. He was in front of a great big 18-wheeler uh, with a sign on it that said, win again, lower taxes, bigger paychecks, more jobs. And the president himself said, when your trucks are moving, America is growing. Then he sat down with Sean Hannity to explain the plan. When we first introduced it, and for years they talk about tax reform, I said the problem with the word reform, nobody understands what it means. Because reform could mean you're going to raise taxes. This is the largest tax cut in the history of our country. It is incredible. It's going to put people to work. So right now, Sean, we are the highest taxed nation in the world. And we're going to be now down in the lower rung in terms of taxes. Uh, a family can get and a business can get, especially a subchapter S, you know, you're doing different kinds of things with your businesses. Some people run it individually, but you can get as much as a 40 percent tax reduction. Again, it's the largest tax reduction. Yeah. Well, yeah, we'll see about that. Uh, we'll see what they can sell. Uh, Kevin Brady will help write it. Uh, Paul Ryan could write it in his sleep 10 years ago. you got to get all the so-called leaders of Congress, not just the president, out there talking to the people. So when Chuck Schumer and others come out and say, oh, this is only for the rich and, and this, that, you have somebody who can come back with substance, not just the president going forward. Well, Republicans need something to show that they are the majority party. Mm -hmm. They haven't gotten anything passed so far. If this happens in December. That's right. And the reason he did that in front of all those truck drivers is most American truck drivers are small businesses right. and they would be greatly impacted. The president also said that the average middle class family would save $4,000 a year if Congress passes this. Asked you what you thought. A lot of email. Yeah, this is from Lee. Says all Republicans need to contact our senators to pass the tax cut plan as is no changes. They need to stick together just like the Democrats do. Uh, Rob says all President Trump has to do is get his tax plan passed is tell the Democrats that you have to pass it to see what's in it and they will <laughs> jump on it like a, like a dog on a bone. There you go. Uh, a tweet from Rick O. Oh, I would rather see roads and bridges built and great gainful employment before the donor class is rewarded with tax cuts again. Seen this before. You know, it was interesting too. I read an article about the protesters. There were only 20 protesters at that event last night and then police said you need to go move your cars. Mm. So they agreed. They went to go move their cars to the the parking garage and most of them left. There were only two of them that came back. <laughs> mm, all right. Meanwhile, uh, we know there have been a lot of protesters uh, on the field with the NFL regarding yeah. it all started with Colin Kaepernick and then after the president of the United States at that rally 19 days ago, uh, a lot of them were protesting the president of the United States. Well, now it sounds like according to the commissioner at a big meeting next week, he's going to say, you know what? Everybody should stand. If we're doing the national anthem, all the players should stand. Talking about the commissioner, Roger Goodell, pictured right there. So he sat down with Sean Hannity to talk about a myriad of things, and that was one of the issues. This is what he had to say. I watched Colin Kaepernick, and I thought it was terrible. And then it got bigger and bigger and started mushrooming. And frankly, the NFL should have suspended him for one game, and he would have never done it again. They could have then suspended him for two games, and they could have suspended him if he did it a third time for the season, and you would never have had a problem. But I will tell you, you cannot disrespect our country, our flag, our anthem. You cannot do that. 
So they're going to have uh, the NFL meetings this week. That's going to be the first thing on their agenda. It was scheduled anyway. But they also reached out to the union, say we'd like you to attend too, because uh, they're concerned about the ratings, concerned about sponsorship, concerned about CTE in the sport, and now they're concerned about this. Well, it's a, clearly a win for the president of the United States if he was able to force this issue. Charlie Gasparino, you know him from the Business Network. He's got a great column in the New York Post today. He says that the NFL admits that Trump knows the fans better than it does. And the commissioner, Roger Goodell, missed a clear trend of stories that looked like his league was run by social justice warriors. The fans, however, noticed, and so did the president. The whole thing seems to be falling apart. And mainstream media is, they're not reporting it the way that a lot of Americans feel about it. In America, I think the American public is just sick of all this. It's not over, yeah. though. I do expect some players to kneel uh, or sit, especially look at the 49ers and look at the Browns. Even during the anthem? Definitely during the anthem. I don't well, mind it before, but no, they can it? sit in between plays. I don't think I have a problem with that. Yeah, it's just the anthem is the main is the main <laughs> issue. The, ultimately, though, when they do that, it's bad for their business because right. a lot of the fans, according to the polls, a majority of Americans want. Well, we just everybody interviewed that guy who hasn't come home in two years. Yeah, you right. know, he's sacrificing so much for our country, and saw his mom, and you saw the video. That poor guy he was excited to have an in out burger. Yeah. He's sacrificing so much and not to stand for those men and women that are doing so much for our country and our right. safety. And he also had to find out from somebody else about Radio, Radio Shack. Radio Shack, I yeah. know. So I know. It's always something. All right, it's 8 11 here in New York City, and Jillian joins us with the Fox News Alert. And oftentimes overseas, they like to watch football as a little, True. you know, True. escape. So Armed keep forces. that in mind, too. Yeah. yeah, think about how they feel when the players aren't staying. Absolutely. Let's begin right now with the Fox News Alert. The White Widow, one of ISIS's most notorious terrorists, is believed to be dead. Sally Jones, a 50 year old mother of two from England, became a top terror recruiter for women after moving to Syria and marrying a jihad. According According to the Sun, she was killed in a U.S. drone strike in June. Ten college students now in police custody accused in the hazing death of another student who died after a night of drinking. Police say Louisiana State student Maxwell Groover had a blood alcohol level nearly six times the legal limit to drive and died of choking from alcohol poisoning last month. Police say he was left in the frat house alone to die. The Phi Delta Theta Charter at Louisiana State is now shut down. The Boy Scouts of America will now allow girls to join its ranks. The move shaking up a tradition that's been on the books for more than a century. The change will now allow them to eventually obtain the coveted Eagle Scout rank. A program for older girls is expected to be available in 2019, also giving them a path to become an Eagle Scout. The Girl Scouts blasting the decision, saying it's all about declining numbers and revenue. So we've all had to wait in the airport during flight delays. Not fun, right? But some people pass the time better than others, like this guy. The traveler grabbing the mic at the gate in New Orleans. Fellow passengers even chiming in while he performed a flawless rendition of Black Street's No Diggity. <laughs> hey guys, I like no the way you work it. I think he was having a good time. Easy. Wait, was Easy. he at the bar before that? I mean, I where did he get it's the courage to do that? <laughs> He's wearing a Redskin shirt. Remember when the Redskins name was the biggest controversy? Oh in the NFL? my goodness. Those were yes. the good old days. All right. They were the good old days. <laughs> Thanks, Jillian. All right, uh, next up on the rundown, they are one of the most lethal terror groups on the planet, and now Hezbollah has its sights set on the United States. Our next guest is a national security expert who says the Iran nuclear deal made the threat. So much worse. No kidding. Plus, the vacation is over. Why former President Obama is heading back to the campaign trail. Look out, Virginia. Fox News alert, and it's good news. After five years uh, held prisoner by the Akani Network in the Pakistan region, a Taliban faction, an American woman and her family just released. Caitlin Coleman was taken hostage with her Canadian husband outside Kabul in 2012 by the Taliban. She, her husband, and two kids have now been released to Pakistan. We don't know all the details. We're getting some of it. Aaron Cohen is the founder of Cherries, which manufactures products for terrorism readiness and is a terrorism expert. Aaron, as you see, the economy network had them. Now they don't. We didn't have to give up five Gitmo guys to exchange. So what do you think happened here? 
Well, I, I completely agree with you, Brian. I, I think what we're seeing here is a forced rescue uh, interdiction operation. That's really what it looks like. And uh, if that's the case, it means that Pakistan, uh, uh, with joint U.S. Um, actionable intelligence, uh, deployed a security team or, or an interdiction team that uh, had information about where this family was being kept for the last two, five years and uh, and performed an entry and and. and and, and got them out and freed them. And I feel like that's what's going on with this one. Well, and we're going to see because we know we told Pakistan they are, you're on notice because we're going to stay in Afghanistan. We know they're the problem. We know that's who the Taliban train and go back and regroup. So maybe they're getting the message. I think the message is getting through. I think it has to be getting through because Pakistan has got a terror problem within its own borders. And if they don't get on board with the U.S. Uh, operational overall mm. macro strategy, uh, you know, they're not going to continue to claw their way out of this, uh, you know, archaic uh, uh, situation they're in as well. So I, right. I think this could be a glimmer of hopefully some, 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 you know, some pro-Pakistani movement towards the right direction democratically as far as their uh, counterterror measures go. Aaron, this big story out there that has is looking to establish a base inside the U.S. to be able to attack when given the go sign, maybe from their parent company, Iran. What do you hear about the credibility of this? Well, I can tell you, Brian, that Iran is one of the oldest uh, um, uh, organized terrorist groups uh, in the history of modern warfare. There's no question that they are essentially the extreme Islamic uh, military uh, on behalf of the Iranian regime. Uh, they have been for, uh, you know, since the, since the bombing in the early 80s of the Marine barracks that killed over 222 servicemen. I think the threat is very credible. I think Hezbollah is as real of a terrorist organization as there comes. I I know that the U.S. security, uh, some of our intelligence or law enforcement agencies arrested back in June two, uh, two members of Hezbollah who were operating as sleepers, both in Michigan and then I believe in uh, New York as well. This is a very real terror group, Brian. Right. And every threat and, and, and kernel needs to be turned over on this group. They've got thousands of rockets. They have uh, thousands of militants who are, you know, willing to strap on bombs and kill U.S. soldiers at the doorstep of their bases. This is the real deal uh, right. with Hezbollah. All right. Aaron Cohen, thanks so much. Reacted to the breaking news and confirming there is uh, some Hezbollah movement in this area. Special thanks to Venezuela for bringing him into our hemisphere. Plus, after six days, Hillary Clinton finally speaking publicly about Harvey Weinstein. What did she just say about the campaign cash that her, his organization gave her? And she loves singing the national anthem. And her husband is a star wide receiver in the NFL. Jesse James Decker joins us live next. Got a Fox News alert now. The massive wildfires in Northern California we've been covering for the last few days expected to get worse today. Look at this, the incredible video showing somebody driving through the fire surrounded by flames and trying to get to safety. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that would be so scary. Will Carr is live in Santa Rosa where the entire neighborhood has been destroyed. Will? Good morning, guys. In this neighborhood, looks like a bomb went off in it. Home after home destroyed. As you walk along, everything gone here. You can see half of this garage door is crumpled and charred. And as we walk along, we've seen so many cars that were uh, charred and burned in this inferno. It was so hot, actually, that the bumpers of the cars melted off and are now scrap metal. And as you look up on this light pole, I want to show you that's the other part of the garage door which is now dangling down. At least 23 people have been killed in these fires. Hundreds more are still missing, so that number could go up. Throughout the rest of the day, there's going to be a red flag warning that's not good for the firefighters on the ground, some of whom have actually lost their own homes while they're trying to protect these communities. And for people who are not in the direct fire line, uh, the air quality is terrible. Many people throughout this area actually wearing masks like this. If they can find them, Many places have sold out, guys. All right, uh, Will Carr live in Santa Rosa, California with the very latest. If that garage door was way up at the top of that pole, there must have been an explosion. Yeah. Holy cow. Terrible. Thanks, Will. All right, well, she is married to Tennessee Titans wide receiver Eric Decker, and she's performed the Star Spangled Banner many, many times.
And recording star Jesse James Decker, who's got a new album out tomorrow, joins us live. Good morning to you. Good morning. You know, uh, you're the perfect person to ask about this because your husband is wide receiver for the Titans, and we're talking about whether or not players should stand for the anthem, which you sing. What are your, what's your uh, point of view on this? You know, everything I wrote in that Instagram post is ex exactly post. how I feel. Um, I wrote in the Instagram post that I really love singing the national anthem. I'm the daughter of a military family. My dad is a general in the Air Force. I've been around military my entire life. Family members in the military. I had my grandfather fought in the Vietnam War. All my uncles fought in World War II. I just, for me, what the anthem means to me may be different than what it means to others. So for me, I just, I like to stand. That's what? just what it means to me. Do you fundamentally think, okay, you have a heavy military background, but it should mean the same thing to everyone if you're an American, right? Well, I, I never knew that it meant anything else. So for me, I just figured the anthem is what it means. So I, I think for me, I, I didn't understand that it meant something else to others, right. which there's nothing wrong with them feeling that way. But for me, the anthem is how I've always been raised to, to feel about it. And when you sing that it. song, you say, you think of them. That's, that's I especially beautiful think setting. of my grandfather. Yeah, yeah, I love the story that you shared with us about your grandfather. Share that with the folks at home. So I, uh, my grandfather, who has now passed, um, he fought in the Vietnam War. And uh, there were a lot of people asking me, going, how can your father fight in the Vietnam War? You're 29. This doesn't make sense. Well, my grandmother was a cougar and married someone that was 15 <laughs> years younger than her. So just to clear that up, yes, he did fight in the Vietnam War. A lot of people doing math at home. They, they, they were. Yeah. They were. And I'm right. like, let me correct this. My grandmother was a cougar. And she married a man that was almost, I feel like they were like, she was 17 years older. Uh, but anyway, yeah. um, he is one of the most special people to me in my life and always was. And he would um, come visit us all all the time when That's my parents great. would go on couples trips. But anyway, he was so passionate about being in the military, especially the national anthem. He would make me go to the other room and he would ask me to turn around and he would ask me to sing the national anthem every time he saw me. And I would sing the whole song and he would just weep. He would just, he didn't want you like to he would crying. cry, like just babbling, crying. Mm -hmm. And as soon as he was done, he'd wipe his tears and pat me on the back and go, thanks, baby, and then move on. <laughs> and that was it. He just wanted a good cry and to just feel those emotions. So, that see, is awesome. so we're back for another season of you and uh, your husband, Eric and you, Jesse. Eric and Jesse. Yes. Uh, brand new season. Here's a clip. So no longer a get. <laughs> you guys are Titans. Brand new season. How's it been? It's been really good. You know, the positive about it all is we live in Nashville. That's our home yeah, base. Awesome. So it was kind of crazy to get the call that we were able to stay home. Um, I will admit that we really did enjoy our time with the Jets. You know, we have really good fond memories. We were treated so unbelievably well. Like, just such a warm, welcoming community. So we'll always have really warm, fuzzy feelings about well, that. Well, y'all took a break. This is season three. Yeah. And it's coming back. When can we see it? So it's on every Wednesday night, mm -hmm. 10, 9 central. I believe we just aired our fifth episode last night. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've got a few more to go, but it, you know, it's, it's, it's fun. All right. Speaking of fun, it's fun promoting new albums. You got one that comes <laughs> yes. out tomorrow. It's called Southern Girl City Lights. Yes, that's right. Is this right. Uh, biographical? You know, it's kind of, I guess you could say Southern Girl City Lights. I am a Southern girl, but I, I get to travel all over the world yeah. and go to major cities, but it, there's something that's just, I don't know, great about coming What's your right back song home. On the album? Um, there's a song on the album uh, called Hungry that I really love, and it's just about remembering your humble roots and never forgetting that and just being grateful. Right. has nothing to do with being pregnant, right? Because we get really no, hungry. No, I am hungry. Let me tell y'all, I went to an amazing restaurant. All the restaurants in New York are great, and they had this big chocolate cake, and it was so good, I took the majority of it home with oh, me. I, like, I'm going to be <laughs> eating off that cake every night this you week. you got to check out her social media because she <laughs> announces her baby, tells her, her daughter that she's going to be a, a big sister and it is That's so great. sweet. <laughs> congratulations. Thank y'all yeah, so much. Congratulations on everything. On the right. album and the TV show. Thank you. Thank y'all. Right. Right. I appreciate All right. it. Thank All right. You. Meanwhile, 29 minutes before the top of the hour on our rundown, this is the story. The vacation is over. Why pre former President Barack Obama is heading back to the campaign trail going to Virginia. Plus, President Trump vowing to help small business owners in his new tax plan. SBA Small Business Administrator Linda McMahon is here to explain how it all works. Coming up live from New York City.
with big breaking news right now. After five years held prisoners by the Haqqani Network, a Taliban faction, an American woman and her family are now free. Fox News Pentagon producer Lucas Tomlinson is live at the Pentagon with these breaking details. Lucas, tell us what we know. Well, here's what we know, Steve. An American family, Caitlin Coleman from Pennsylvania and her three young children, all born under captivity by a Taliban offshoot called the Haqqani Network, along with her Canadian husband, are finally free after five years in captivity, after the family went for a hike in 2012 outside Kabul. Now, Caitlin Coleman was seven months pregnant at the time with her first child. But we now know today that the Pakistan military launched an operation based on a tip from the U.S. intelligence agencies uh, to secure the family's release. President Trump last night speaking at a rally in Pennsylvania, the same state where Caitlin Coleman is from, hinted that uh, there was good news coming. And the announcement today was first, uh, first came out out of Pakistan with the army celebrating the release of this family. Guys. All right. Uh, Lucas, so does it sound like the United States pressured them to do this? Well, it's not immediately clear, Steve, but certainly uh, since President Trump announced last month a new strategy for South Asia, for Afghanistan and Pakistan, one of the key components is new pressure on the Pakistan government to deny the Taliban and Haqqani network a safe haven in Pakistan. And it's worth noting, Steve, there are two other American hostages believed to still be under captivity by the Haqqani network in Afghanistan or Pakistan. So we're not sure when it comes to a rescue operation, we're not sure who did the rescue. Would you say it's clear that the Americans didn't do the rescue or is that still up in the air? Well, Brian, I'm told that U.S. Special Operations Forces did not play a role. Uh, certainly, uh, the U.S. intelligence agencies did. They did provide a tip about the location about where the family was located and then the Pakistan military rolled in. Okay, Guys? thank you, Lucas. Thank you. All right. All right, Jillian has some more headlines for us this morning. That's right. Okay. Good Thursday morning to you guys, to you at home as well. Let's begin with this Fox News alert. Brand new audio surfacing this morning of a Mandalay Bay employee warning hotel staff someone was shooting. Call the police. Someone's firing a gun up here. Someone's firing a rifle on the 32nd floor down the hallway. Meanwhile, an autopsy of the shooter, Stephen Paddock's brain showed nothing abnormal, but he may have been on anti-anxiety medication known to cause aggressive behavior. Now to the Harvey Weinstein scandal. TMZ reporting Harvey boarded a private jet overnight, heading to a sex rehab and behavior center in Arizona. He was originally supposed to head out of the country, but the plan changed. This coming just hours after TMZ also reported Weinstein's daughter called 911, claiming her dad was, quote, suicidal and depressed. As for Hillary Clinton, it's been six days and she has finally said what she will give Weinstein's campaign donation to. Well, sort of. Take a listen. Would you give the money back? Well, there's no one to give it back to. What other people are saying, what my former colleagues are saying is they're going to donate it to charity. And of course I will do that. I give 10 percent of my income to charity every year. This will be part of that. Uh, there's no uh, there's no doubt about it. Weinstein and his family have given more than 1.4 million in political contributions to the Democratic Party. For the first time since leaving the White House, former President Barack Obama is going back on the campaign trail. Obama will stump for Lieutenant Governor Ralph Northam, the Democratic hopeful, in Virginia's governor's race. He's set to appear at a rally in Richmond next week. President Trump has endorsed his rival, Republican Ed Gillespie. And we have a wonderful story we want to share with you. Our very own Janice Dean stepping up in a big way to help Texas in the wake of Hurricane Harvey. Get this, she is donating all proceeds from her latest book, Freddy the Frogcaster and the Flash Flood, to Team Rubicon, a group of military vets providing relief. Her dedication isn't going unnoticed in Washington. Last week, Janice Dean of Fox News visited the district I represent and told the story about how Team Rumicon is helping with debris removal in Wharton, Texas. Janice joined Team Rubicon in their relief efforts last week in Texas. And Janice, as I texted you the other day, I'm very, very right. proud to know you. That's a news story. That's <laughs> unbelievable. Right. Fox News alert. That's never happened Julian, before. Uh, you've been working this story for how long? 
What's that? You've been working this Janice Dean story. Forever. Now. I've been trying to get an exclusive, and she just wouldn't let it happen. I, I will now. Well, that's you. incredible. You made the house floor, and they honored you. That's wonderful. I mean, and listen, Team Rubicon are a wonderful group of people that integrate our veterans after their service. They get out, they, they help in disaster areas, yes. and it was my privilege to cover them. I mean, what I, my heart was just lighter that day well, seeing them. you're so selfless in donating all your proceeds, you so you not really only are. are you a news story, Story, but you were a couple of months ago a sports story when you retired from dog racing. Well, that's right, Janice Dean, the running the greyhound. Machine, the greyhound. I mean, this year on Fox and Friends yeah, has been really. Tr I don't know how I'm going to out top this year. Janice, right. if people want to buy your book, since you're donating all the proceeds to Team Rubicon, where can they buy it? They can buy it at where any books are sold. Freddie right. the Frogcaster. Oh, thank right. you guys. That's amazing. That's and thank great. you, Congressman Farenthold, as well, for doing that. What an honor yeah. it is no, to be okay. on right. the House floor. All right. JD, how'd you find out? Uh, he told me. Oh, he told you he was going to mention? Okay, yeah, fine. Yeah, he did. And he's a big fan of Fox and Friends. Oh, good. So well, wave, good morning. wave to everybody at home. Thank right. you for honoring Hi, your girl. Hi, Congressman Hold. Nice well, to see well, you. Well, why do you say that on C-SPAN, not on Fox News? It's <laughs> unbelievable. It's pretty amazing. Thank right. you, guys. Coming up, President Trump vowing to help small business owners with his new tax plan. We're going to protect small business owners and their families so they can continue to run their companies with dedication and with love. The Small Business Administrator for the United States, Linda McMahon, here next with what it means to you and your family. President Trump vowing to make the American dream possible once again. We're going to protect small business owners and their families so they can continue to run their companies with dedication and with love. And we will make taxes simple and easy and fair for all Americans. Administrator Linda McMahon, good morning. Good morning. So what you, you're out there, you talk to the small businesses and the people who own these companies. What are they telling you that they really need? Well, I can tell you, uh, Ainsley, over the last uh, several months, I've been to about 22 different cities and met with many small businesses around the country. And without fail, I hear from them, look, cut my taxes. I will reinvest that money in my business, I will hire more workers, I will grow my business, and I will help grow this economy. And that's what they're, that's what they're concerned with, but they need to know what their tax rate is. They, they aren't talking so much about reform. What I really hear is tax rates, cut my taxes, and let me have that additional sure. money to reinvest in my company. And, of course, the president, I think he was just holding up a single piece of paper to say, you know, I'm going to simplify it so you can uh, file your taxes on one sheet of paper. The headline, though, is uh, twofold. First of all, the president said that the average middle-class American family would save $4,000 every year. And he made this pitch in front of truck drivers. Each and every one of those truck drivers, many of them, were actually small business people as well, so they would benefit from the president's plan. Absolutely. I mean, when you look at, uh, you know, truckers, when, when trucks are rolling, the economy's growing because goods are being delivered, raw materials are being brought to companies, uh, our food is getting everywhere it needs to get. So truckers really are p part of the, you know, they're part of the basics of our mm -hmm. small businesses, and they, they mostly are pass-through businesses, small businesses. So when they see that extra money coming through, it's just a, it's a big boon, you know, to that particular industry. Linda, what do you make of what the critics are saying? Because when you listen to the president, all the tax brackets, everyone's taxes go down. Everyone's in a, in a lower rate, getting a lower rate. But when you hear Chuck Schumer say, the people who are the wealthiest, they're, they're gonna pay less, and the people who are the poorest are gonna pay more, is there truth to that? I think you're going to always hear that from the opposition, but really, I, when you look at what the president is doing, when all of the marginal rates are coming down, we're going from seven brackets to three brackets, uh, a top rate on our small business that have passed through income is going to be 25 percent. Some of those businesses today mm -hmm. pay the top bracket, and even when you throw in uh, you know, city and state taxes, they're paying as much as 42 percent. So to have it capped at 25, this is really a big boon to small businesses. And, you know, middle-income families, I think the president um, has indicated that 
would probably have about an additional four thousand dollars every year of income that they can either save or spend uh, those are those are big things to our middle class Americans. Yeah, we like to keep more of our money, just yeah. saying. Uh, Mrs. McMahon, uh, you were just talking about small businesses. I was down in Naples, Florida over the past weekend for a, a lovely wedding, and I noticed that a lot of damage down in Florida, a lot of small businesses impacted. How has the SBA stepped up to help the folks impacted not only in Florida, but other hurricane states? Well, I've, um, I've been to Puerto Rico uh, with President Trump. Uh, I went to Houston with him, and then I just came back from Houston yesterday. Uh, I was with Governor Scott a little over a week ago as we looked at small businesses. What SBA does is come in right behind FEMA, and sometimes we co-locate uh, in the FEMA offices to get applications coming in to uh, SBA for loans for businesses as well as homes. This is the only time that SBA actually loans money. Typically, we guarantee hmm. loans. So up to $200,000. Uh, whether it's a business loan, a home loan, a mortgage, uh, renters who have lost property, uh, capital or inventory losses. So there's a cap of 200000 but that can go across the board. Yeah, that uh, can for, help people rebuild. For, oh, wow. Absolutely. So right. we have now, just for, for instance, in Houston, we have now uh, approved over 12,000 loans for about $1.1 billion. Um, so that's that's very meaningful uh, in that market to get people back up and running. And then we in Puerto Rico, a little bit slower in Puerto Rico yeah. simply because they don't have their power grids up, uh, their communication channels are still down, mm -hmm. so their applications are a little slower coming in. But we are on the ground all over the island delivering actually paper applications and helping people fill those out to That's get great. them back into the system. Yes, giving those families a little bit of hope after they've lost everything. Thank you so much for what you're doing. Thank and you. thanks for being with us. All right. It's a pleasure. Thanks. You bet. Bye, Linda. All right. Uh, next up on our Thursday morning rundown, Rob and Jillian from Fox and Friends First go head-to-head <laughs> -to -head in the kitchen where they Fox and Friends Bake Off. <laughs> but first, let's check in with Bill Hemmer to find out what's coming up at the I, top of I the hour. It's bacon and eggs at 5 a.m. for those two. Good morning, guys. <laughs> More on these Americans coming home. What a story this is developing to be coming up on that. Also, opening bid on tax reform. What can pass Congress? Big question yet again. Also, what now with the Iran deal? We're about to find out. Big news on Obamacare with the president signs in a moment could change your coverage. We'll tell you how. And did the NFL lose to the White House? We'll debate that when Sandra and I see you, top of the hour, 10 minutes away.